G'day watchers, welcome to Perth Watch, your horology channel broadcasting from right here in Perth, Western Australia. Today I have another piece from Audaz. I've reviewed a couple of pieces uh, from this company. They do uh, tend to aim to make professional type of spec dive watches or at least uh, diving uh, tool watches for use you know, in actual application. Um, you know, the, the other watches I've reviewed certainly were chunky ones. So I'll link some of these up uh, right here for you guys to take a look uh, if you wish to go back to some of these other reviews later. Uh, they do come in a very, uh, you know, utilitarian travel type case, uh, you know, like this. So let's just flip the camera around now and take a closer look at today's watch. All right, guys, so here we have the box on the table. Uh, not, you know, fantabulous packaging, but I like the practical travel case, you know, kind of this rugged, I think, nylon travel case that it comes in, uh, you know, practical, which is what I like. And spinability, I tell you, it's pretty darn good. It's at least a four out of five, or at least four and a half, I would reckon, if I could give half marks for the spin rating. Okay, getting this out then, uh, nothing too surprising, like foam uh, protecting the watch here. And then I'll just quickly show you, uh, you know, that many spare links to suit a much larger wrist than mine. If you have a, I reckon an eight and a half or, or even a nine inch wrist, uh, this would still fit you with all the links in. A very simple manual, um, just, you know, nothing, nothing groundbreaking there. I think uh, almost, None of you, very, very few of you watching this channel will need to use a manual for a three-hander date movement like this one, I reckon. Okay, so let's just put that aside and show you the watch. So guys, here we have the Audaz Octomarine Automatic Dive Watch, the model number uh, down here, 2070-02, which is for this blue version, right? It does come in a, a couple of other color versions and you can check out the website for the variations, the actual MSRP is 400 USD. Uh, but you know, with the discount code that I'll provide with you guys, um, it, it'll, it'll be less than $300, uh, 280 with 30% discount, which is pretty darn good, I reckon, for uh, a watch like this. So, you know, as is my want to do, let's just open that up. And first bit is to talk about the movement. So in here, um, as with other Audaz watches I've reviewed, is the Seiko NH35A. Uh, nothing new to many of you, I'm sure. All the stats down the left side of the screen. And then um, I'll just say that um, in this case, the, the date window is at the three o'clock position. It's framed with an applied window. So that's pretty nice. You know, it's a white disc uh, with black writing. It would have been maybe a bit better if they gave us a black or better yet, a blue disc with white writing, I reckon. Accuracy uh, rating, you can see on the left there, in actual use, this has been actually pretty darn good. It's running about plus five seconds per day in the more than one week that I've had this running, which is very, very acceptable, I think, for a Seiko NH35A out of a company. So kudos to them for doing a fair job. I'm gonna assume they did a fair job and it's not a fluke. All right, talking about the case then. So the case here is, is 42 millimeters on the case itself, but the bezel, which is really what gives you the, the case feel, is 43 millimeters. You can see at a side profile, the, de the bezel is slightly wider than the case. So realistically, uh, in terms of how it wears, 43 millimeters on the bezel. Thickness is a, it's a chunker. It's an absolute chunker, 16 millimeters in terms of full thickness there. 22 millimeter lug width and a lug to lug distance, which uh, you know, it's kind of what you expect for this size, 51 millimeters between my thumbs there, okay? And it's got that automatic helium escape valve that you can see right in the middle of screen there. You know, pretty, you know, pretty quiet and subtly done, which I like, you know. Overall weight in this metal bracelet with the number of links removed, 203 grams. It is definitely a chunky and heavy watch that you will feel. Finishing wise, finishing wise is completely brushed. They've gone for a fully brushed finish. All right, so horizontal brushing, you can see there on the side of the bezel, longitudinal brushing at the top of the surface of the lugs there, longitudinal on the side, as well as the bottom surface of the lugs, okay? The, the case back itself is circular brush, you can see there, with a very, rather nice, a uh, very deeply stamped octopus motif, you know, which is where the name, uh, I guess, is related to that, octomarine or marine octopus, right? That's really what you're seeing there. Okay, very solid case back with nice art, um, a very chunky crown, right? So that's a sign crown there with a very 
chunky black grip there. I mean, I, I, it's not rubber. I, I think this is going to be black PVD. It doesn't feel like rubber at all. It feels fairly solid. Uh, so with the, those features, this is rated a full 500 meters, right? This is what the rating they've gone for. A very full-blooded dive rating there is what this gives you. Okay, moving on to the dial then. The dial here, hopefully you can see in the, the indoor lighting, I think you can see some of that there, right? It's a blue sunburst. It's a very deep blue sunburst, fairly subtly done. Uh, it's got applied indices that you can see there, as well as that date window. Printed words, right? Most of the words are printed, as well as the printed uh, chapter ring. Uh, the Audaz brand at the 12 o'clock position is in slight relief. It's not an applied brand name, but there's a slight thickness to the printing there that gives it a slight uh, 3D um, appearance as you kind of pan it around if you hold it in hand. The hands are sword style, you can see, right? The, the hour and minute hands are sword style. Uh, there is a stick, simple stick uh, for the seconds. Superluminova is in all the usual spots with pretty good application. This, this kind of uh, easily lasts the whole night. Definitely the, the hands and the indices last the whole night quite easily. The bezel, uh, you know, slightly less so, but that's what you expect for uh, bezel loom generally. So it's a full loom bezel uh, that you can see here on the loom shot I will share with you guys to show you how it looks like in the dark. Okay, so uh, surrounding the dial is a 120 click unidirectional bezel, of course, you know, in a dive watch. It's got that full loom ceramic insert, which you saw uh, glowing in the dark. And yes, it is actually a ceramic, which is pretty nicely done. Let's hear how it look, feels like now. Five. Five, okay, so 10 clicks for uh, five minutes. So it's a 120 click unidirectional bezel. Okay, let's just turn it all the way now. Nice and chunky clicks, you know, not too loud, but gives you a confident click on the, you know, as you rotate it, which is kind of nice, you know, minimal black play. They've done this fairly well. On top of the dial is a flat sapphire crystal with a degree of anti-reflective coating. All right, so that's the case. Let's talk about the bracelet now. Solid, five piece per link. Uh, unfortunately, it's push pin and collar. There's no screw links on these Audaz watches, so none of the two uh, bracelets I've seen have screw links. Solid end links, you know, very chunky solid end links. Uh, solid deployant arms, but again, the same, you know, looks like a Chinese OEM press metal class with four point micro adjustment and a press metal keeper. That's really what I'm seeing here. Okay, so let's just clip it on the wrist now, snap it on for the wrist shot for you guys. So that's why I like bracelets, is that you can just snap it on very quickly, unlike a leather strap. That's how it looks like. Okay, nice, nice looking bracelet. I like the bracelet. And what a chunk of the watch, which is really, I think, a little bit too large for me in the size, particularly that 16 millimeter thickness. So you can see how it looks like it really sticks out on the wrist. And over 200 grams, I'm not ever going to forget this is on my wrist. All right, so what do I like about this? Right, I think you got to say this is a very sturdily, solidly built full-blooded diver, 500 meters is what they've uh, given it, with fairly good quality execution, particularly in the body of the case, as well as the, the bracelet, you know, for under 300, this is very, very solid. And I also like the overall look, how they they haven't gone for any bling whatsoever. Uh, in the only polished surface is really the ceramic, right? The dial is fairly subtle. Uh, and everything else is, there's no polish, right? It's all brush, which means that it's relatively quiet despite its, you know, chunker monster of a size. So I, I think that's quite good. I think it's a good choice that they've gone for no, no polished surfaces on the steel here. I think the case is well done. I, I want to kind of, again, I really suspect they probably have a similar case manufacturer to Spinnaker, which is another micro brand which typically do pretty solid case. The case is pretty well done. Very, very nice uh, stamped case back and very nicely done bracelet, apart from the fact that it's push pins. This is pretty nice and actually really quite comfortable, really quite well finished, okay? That's, that's really what I can say about this. For under $300, you know, with the discount code, I think pretty compelling well at value, right? It's, it's not um, easy to find much, much better than this, you know? This is actually very, very solid and you're getting a lot of watch for the money here. The weaknesses, well, look, I think at full MSRP, if you're thinking it's 400 USD, I think push pins and a relatively poor class may prove critical um, for people deciding because at that price range, you're getting you know better features. I think you know the, the case is pretty good, but I think the, the weaknesses comes on the back end here. 
Um, you know, I think it's massive and it's over the top type of sizing and thickness, which means that it's not a versatile watch. You're not going to wear this with a shirt and tie, I don't think, or at least I won't. Uh, and it probably stops it from being more widely appealing because not everybody will like a 43 millimeter watch that's 16 millimeter stick. That is a chunker and I would only use this in more casual situations. That's just my personal take on this. Overall, I think the design is slightly generic, right? Some of the other designs are more original. They've got more original features. This one, yes, it's not copying anybody, but I think none of these features are completely original and groundbreaking. It's just got a slightly more generic look. Nothing wrong with that, but you know, some people may not like that. All right, so guys, there you go. A quick review. That's my thoughts on the Audaz, uh, this model that I have in hand. Let's flip the camera around now for the wrap up. So there you go guys, my review of the Audaz Octomarine Dive Watch, uh, their latest offering or at least one of their most recent offerings. Let me know what you think about this particular piece, uh, especially if you, you own this piece or you have any experience with Audaz. Would love to hear your own experiences. I think there are certain positive things about this particular watch, but of course it is more a full-blooded tool diver, so it's not going to be uh, something that everyone likes or is suitable for everyone. You know, that's really my personal take on this. Guys, if you enjoy my videos, do consider subscribing. New content every week, always aiming to be objective and unbiased about all things horology. Thank you again for sticking with me, and as always, I'll catch you guys again next time.